All right, good evening. I was tagged by Steve Shaw in uh, a video to make a video, my version of what 10 exercises would I choose if I, if, if, if whatever happened, I ended up with no muscle anymore back where I started, I guess, and had to regain my muscle as quickly and efficiently as I could. And I could only utilize 10 different exercises. What would they be? So, Steve, I think that's a pretty interesting topic. I think that's a really cool topic. Steve was tagged in it by uh, somebody else who was tagged in it by somebody else. And, I don't know, several people now have made their versions of it. The only one I watched is Steve's. But uh, it sounds cool, man. I'd be more than happy to participate. Uh, these are my 10, and some of them come with some caveats because uh, I, I do certain things like Steve has his way that he does dumbbell rows, which I think is actually pretty brilliant. I think it's a pretty damn good way to do dumbbell rows. Um, you know, letting it sit on the floor, rest on the floor. So like he's doing uh, almost rest pauses, kind of, but he's... Yeah, pretty much, basically. Anyway, so here's my top 10. And like I said, some of these I have kind of my own way of, of doing some of these exercises, and I'll get into that. So here they go. Here's the 10 that I would choose. It may not be the 10 that you would choose. If you disagree, post away, you know. If it, if it really incites you that much, like you think these are really stupid, <laughs> exercises for me to pick then just email me if you're that upset about it and we'll talk about it all right of course i'm going to pick the bench press it's going to be there bench press i was a big bencher um many you can put a lot of size on a bench press if you don't have any shoulder problems all that jazz yeah i'm going to say bench press flat barbell bench press and then i'm going to say this one's probably going to strike people as odd you know, because Steve didn't um, use, utilize any kind of a machine type of stuff. All his shit was free weight, and I get that, man. I respect that, but I'm going to go with Smith Machine Incline Presses because of the way that I do them. I get a 90-degree seated bench, something I can lean over the back, something the pad's not too high, right? And I get up underneath the Smith Machine so far under it, that if I don't lean way, way, way back over the pad, arch my back, I sit the thing, I'm sitting straight up, but I'm arched so far back over the top of that thing. Uh, and if I did not, it would come down and smash me in the face. So I'm so far back over top of that thing, and it really brings out upper chest. When I'm really going heavy and I'm really healthy and I'm putting size on, it does miracles for your upper chest. It will just blow your upper chest up. Uh, I really like it a lot. You know, your shoulders are getting some work too, but it really brings that upper chest in. But it's, it, it, you set up as if you're going to do a seated uh, military press, you know, on a Smith machine, but you rock way back over top of it. And that's the only reason I use the Smith machine to do it is because I can't get myself in that position with free weights. It's too precarious, but on a Smith machine, I can do it. And so that's why I like that. And then I'm going to say... Uh, and this one might be an oddball too to some people, but I'm going to say dumbbell uh, pullovers, cross bench dumbbell pullovers. And the reason I'm going to say that is because that is such a utility type of exercise. I can just alterate, alterate the way that I perform the exercise and uh, I can hit either my lats with that exercise or I can hit chest with that exercise. You know, and then if I wanted to, depending on what I did from my elbow to my to my wrist, I could even bring more triceps in or less triceps in, right? I could purposely bring triceps in, which a lot of people might do if they don't have proper form and they're not meaning to do that. But you could intentionally do that and bring more tricep in. So it gives me a way around this 10, uh, 10 exercise limitation kind of, you know, gives me something, some more versatility there because... Uh, and, and when I do them, I get way across the bench, and I really, really get a big arch. And my hips have to be low. Your pelvis has to be really low. You get to, it way down that pelvis low. 
and arch that back up across the bench so that my head is hanging off of the bench. Um, and then I got the dumbbell behind me and I grab the dumbbell, you know, like this and do my pullovers. And again, I can pull over with my lats or I can pull over with my chest. And if I were going to utilize it for chest, I would do it probably my last chest exercise. You know, out of the scant few I have here, I have flat barbell bench press and I've got my Smith Machine incline presses, which are super, super steep. And uh, then I would do the dumbbell pullovers. I would do that as a finisher. And it's still, you can definitely open your rib cage up with that exercise. There's no question. Since back in the golden era, dudes were, you know, um, opening their rib cage up with this thing. You know what I mean? If you get a really good workout in and you get up the next day and you can lean back like this and crack your sternum, because to a degree that's just like a cartilage, and you can spread that son of a bitch. You actually can do that. That's not bro science. Um, after you've been in the game a long time, you've been lifting, you're really... You're gonna have a hell of a time doing that, you know, ever getting to the point where you can rock back and crack that son of a bitch again, you know, after a workout. But every now and again, you surprise yourself, you can still manage it. But when you're first starting out, yeah, you can really, you can really take advantage of that and spread that sternum and open that rib cage up so you can build a bigger chest and, and have a, a larger, uh, you know, larger diameter rib cage. And I think it does work. Um, and, and again, I can use it for lats. I can, again, I can use it for a finisher for my lats on my back day for width. You know, I like it for that. I'm going to say squat, barbell squat, barbell back squats. But I, do, I want to do them narrow and ass to heels. So, yeah, I'm going to lighten up and do them lighter. But, you know, when I first started out, I used to squat really wide stance. And so you're going to drop down. You're only going to go parallel or just below parallel because just mechanically you really aren't going to go can't go much lower than that you're not going as to heels not if you have a really wide stance right and that's great i mean i built up some size with that but i really blew up and had overall really excellent leg development when i started moving my feet in about shoulder width apart and uh, my feet are turned outwards you know like when you're looking down at your feet my feet are like this i like it so not straight I see a lot of people put them straight all the time. As far as I'm concerned, that creates a shearing effect with the knee. If you look down and you look at, you know, the biomechanics, I believe it creates a shearing effect on the knee. So, you know, some of these kind of things that people, you know, don't think about, that might be why people complain about knee issues with squatting. So I want my feet out like this, and I want it about shoulder width, and I want to go literally ass to heels as far as I biomechanically and physically capable of going. And I may even do rest pauses. I like to do rest pauses a lot like that. And so you're not going to go as heavy, but um, even though I did have to go to lighter, you're not going to have to go a hell of a lot lighter. I mean, you're going to go lighter. There's no doubt you're going to go lighter. But you're going to get um, much better overall leg development from that. And since I have a limited number of exercises, you know, I want something that's going to stimulate as much uh, as possible. Then I'm going to say stiff-legged, deadlifts stiff leg deadlifts and the reason that i like stiff legs is uh for hamstrings and it's again another very versatile exercise you can you can uh you know bend your knees more bend your knees less because it's not straight leg it's stiff leg you know you put a little more bend a little less bend in your knees bring the bar a little closer to your shins bar a little bit further out you know and these variations like this i can Put the accent of that exercise wherever I want it. If I want it on my glutes, I can focus on glutes. If I want it on my hamstrings, I can put it dead on the hamstrings. 100% can completely control what that exercise is stimulating, you know, just by these small changes. So, love it. Good utility exercise. Uh, and I'm going to do barbell deadlifts. You know, I'm going to have that in there, but I want to do them the way that I do them, which is a deadlift and a shrug together. See, again, another way to kind of cut a corner. Um, you know, I don't have to, as a bodybuilder, just to build mass. I don't have to do rep after rep of deadlifts. So just don't. I have done it. I have done it. Uh, and, and it's definitely going to build up. You know, you're going to build some strength and muscle that way too. But you're going to build strength and muscle even if you do it the way I do it. And the way that I would do it was, uh, you know, depending on how strong you are, like say I'm going to put... 45 and a 45 on, one on each side, 
and I'm going to deadlift that up one time, and I'm going to shrug the shit out of it. And that's because it's light. I may shrug that bastard 35, 30, 35 times, you know, with good form, and then I'm going to sit it down, and then I'm going to sit my ass down and rest a minute. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to put maybe, uh, I'm like, it depends how I feel. I may only put a quarter on each side because I'm there for a while. I'm going to be there a while. I'm settling in, you know, and then I'll do the same thing. Maybe I'll jump right to 45, so then we got 225. I'll do the same exact thing. I'll pick it up and shrug it as many times as I, I possibly can, and then I'll sit it back down, and then i got to recover. I'm going to rest a minute. I'm taking my time with this exercise. I'm not rushing through this one. You know, my pace is usually very quick, but not in this case, not for these primary uh, mass builders that I consider compound movements. And I'll continue to add weight, and, and I've, I've gotten up to, Jesus God, I've literally gotten up to like, when I get to close to 600 pounds, I'm going to lose my grip will fail by then, because I'm not using wraps and straps, and so I don't use any of that stuff. Now, if you wanted to use wraps, you could use them once your grip fails. I wouldn't turn to those wraps. I wouldn't use that crutch. It's going to, it, it is going to impinge upon your ability to develop your forearms, to develop a good grip, if you use them all the time. I wouldn't use them all the time. I would go and work like that, like all hell, like I don't need them. And then when it fails, when the weight's coming out of my hands, when it's literally, you know, as long as I can still monkey grip it, right? I can still get another set like that. I can still get another set just with my fingers, you know, even with a heavy weight. But when it's pulling my fingers apart and I'm actually losing it, then I may strap up with some, with some straps and, uh, you know, get my final set that way. But I'm not going to use these straps all the time like that. It's not going to happen overall functional development and strength. I want to be able to grab something in the real world when I don't have straps and all this other crap on, you know, and I want to hang on to it. So I need that grip to really work. Um, and I'm going, to do, I'm going to do curl bar rows, bent over rows with a curl bar, because that way, you know, I do them underhanded. It puts my hands in exactly the position that I want them to be. And it really, I really get really good. It's narrow enough so that my elbows are coming straight back. They're not out too wide and flaring. It almost forces you to use reasonable form, you know, um, just just in the mechanics of the, the movement, just because of the way that the bar is set up. And I like doing that. And I've gone very heavy that way. I've gone up to, you know, uh, 345s on the side, you know, for high rep sets. And um, it, it pretty much... For me, I, I, I love it with a, with a curl bar back in the day. I would do them a lot. Um, and then I would have upright rows. And again, the reason I'm going to say I want to do upright rows is because I can vary my hand positions. I place the accent where I want. You know, I can move my hands wider on the bar and do upright rows with them wider to bring in more side delts, right? Or I can put my hands closer together to bring in more, more traps. You know, so I'm loving that. I love all that. Um, heavy seated overhead French presses with a curl bar. It's a mouthful, huh? Yeah, French presses with a curl bar. And again, the curl bar just puts my hands in just the right position that I want. Um, and I've done these with 245s on each side in the day. Throw it up and sit down on, the, on you know, like a 90 degree little seated bench and sit down on that and throw that thing up behind my head and do French presses with it. So I'm getting my tricep working there, it's still stimulating my shoulders, you know. And the last one I would have would be standing barbell curls with an Olympic straight bar, a straight Olympic bar, barbell curls with a straight Olympic bar. So those are my 10. I don't know about anybody else, you can disagree or agree, but don't knock it if you ain't tried it. Oh, and before I forget, who am I going to tag? I want to tag, believe it or not, I'm going to tag Jay Cutler. Um, I think that would be really interesting to see what he would pick. And I want to tag um, Brent Gobat over Armed and All Heart. You may not know who he is, but he's an awesome dude. You know, very positive, um, very uplifting channel, everything about it. I want to tag him. And uh, I want to tag... Um, Jose Raymond. Used to train with Jose Raymond. I want to tag Jose Raymond. I want to see what Jose would say was his, were his 10. So, undoubtedly, these people aren't going to see this video, so reach out and, 
I don't know. Don't, well, I'll get the message there. Don't worry. Anyway, uh, I don't know that they'll respond to it, but, you know, what the fuck? I'm going to pick three people. That's who I pick. I'm going to pick Jay Cutler, uh, Jose Raymond, and Brent Govat over Armed and All Heart. Have a good night.